The astral plane, what is it, where is it, and why does it exist? Let's talk a little bit about that. Hey guys, welcome back to Tifro, it's me Matt here, and today I want to talk a little bit more about astral projection. More specifically, I want to talk about the astral plane. What is the astral plane? Well, the astral plane is essentially a name for the place that you go when you're astral projecting. The reason that it's referred to as the astral plane is because Essentially, it's believed by many to be a separate plane of existence. Rather than perhaps just being a sphere inside your mind like you go to when you're dreaming, a lot of people believe that when you're astral projecting, you actually are in some alternate plane of existence, an alternate dimension perhaps. Now, I'm not going to try and sway your views either way on this because honestly I don't know whether this is actually a real other dimension or whether it's all internal in the mind. I don't know. I have my own views on that and I have mentioned these before in my What is Astral Projection video, which I'll link over there. So you can check that out and find my views on the subject. Um, but basically, the astral plane is something that's been discussed for a long, long time because astral projection isn't something new. You see, the spiritual mystics of old, from thousands of years ago, from various different traditions around the world have been taking these journeys for a long time. You see all these talks of a spiritual vehicle, the Merkaba, or some kind of soul chariot where the mystic is able to use this to leave their body and visit the heavens. And these heavens, uh, what are these heavens? Well, often they were spoken of as seven heavens, and this number seven is interesting because seven is a prevalent number throughout spirituality. What are there seven of? There are seven sins in Christianity, there are seven chakras, there are seven heavens, and there are seven seals in Revelations. What is this number seven and why is it so important and what does it have to do with the astral plane? Well, see this is where it gets interesting because if we correlate all these things together, we can see that perhaps this number seven is actually referring to the same things all the time. So perhaps these seven seals of Revelations are actually the same as the seven chakras. Perhaps these seven sins and seven virtues are related to sins and virtues that affect each of the seven chakras. So, the chakras. What do they have to do with astral projection? Well, each chakra is essentially an energy center on the body. It's not necessarily um, like a specific physical part of the body, but it is a series of functions that affect an area of the body, that affect your mind. So for example, you have your root chakra at the bottom, which is associated with grounding and your kind of connection to earth, your feelings of safety and security. And it's also related to a lot of your bodily functions. For example, your sense of smell is related to the root chakra. So you can see that this is, uh, they don't necessarily correlate to where in the body they are completely, because, you know, sense of smell doesn't come from, you know, down lower there. Um, but all of these energy centers, they play a role in all of your spiritual experiences and astral projection is one of them. Now, when we talk about astral projection and the chakras, depending on your views on astral projection, um, if you do believe that you're actually leaving your body, one of the common things that a lot of people report is that you actually leave your body via one of the energy centers. Each time that you actually separate from your body, you do it via one of the chakras. So if you're doing that, then there's seven different ways that you can separate from the body. Now do you see where this number seven is coming in? And what I mentioned about seven heavens that these people were visiting in the past. So perhaps, depending on which chakra you actually leave the body via, you are ending up in a different location. One of these seven heavens, so to speak. So, perhaps there are seven astral planes all related to each of these chakras. And so what would we find on these different planes? Well, it depends on our kind of level of spiritual evolution because, you know, if you are stuck in a state of low vibration, you know, you're in a very fear-based mindset, you're very negative and draining on people and stuff like that, you're going to come out based on that in a place that is very, very similar to that because how you are with that particular chakra that you leave through is going to affect how you actually come out there. You know, if you if you perhaps go through uh, the root chakra and your root chakra is experiencing problems, you know, you don't feel safe, you don't feel secure, you're not grounded, you're very airy and, you know, out there, um, then you're going to end up in a place where you don't feel secure, where you don't feel safe, where you perhaps feel scared, or you encounter, you know, negative entities that, you know, scare you and put you in danger. So, essentially, the astral plane is 
in my opinion, a reflection of the state of you spiritually at this moment. When you go out, you're going to encounter a location appropriate for your spiritual development at that time. You're going to come to one that's appropriate to the particular chakra that you leave through. And there are various locations. It's not just one place. We don't know whether it's a place internal to us, we don't know whether it's a place external, but either way, there's not just one place, there are multiple planes, and these planes are related very much to where you are in your spiritual journey. What you encounter there is a reflection of what's going on inside you, and so you can learn from that. If you're encountering negative experiences every time you astral project, that's a sign that you have things in your life that you need to change and you need to work on. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep astral projecting, because perhaps by facing these things, you'll actually learn more about yourself and develop more on your journey. So anyway, that's been a little bit about the astral plane, and I hope that I can offer a unique perspective here, because I hear people talking about the astral plane, but I haven't heard many people making the whole correlation. And it's weird, because you, if you actually look at texts about astral projection and that from, you know, hundreds of years ago, a lot of them mention this concept, because uh, the seven heavens, for example, that I mentioned, were also correlated to the seven planets in astrology. Um, because traditionally there are only seven planets talked about in astrology and each of these was related to one of the chakras, each of these was related to one of these planes that you could visit when astral projecting. It's been talked about for a long time but it seems kind of ignored at the minute so I'm curious what your thoughts are. Do you think that there are these seven different planes related to the chakras? Do you think the chakras are even involved in astral projecting at all? What are your thoughts? Share them down in the comments below, I'd love to hear. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe up there because we've got regular videos that come out every week. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, like the ones that I just mentioned, then leave them down below. And if you want to keep watching, check out the video linked on screen. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.